Indeed I do. Ellen Coleman, who is the CEO and chairman of DuPont, is going to step down. She's retiring, effective on August 16th. On uh, October 16th, I should say, on that date, Edward Breen, who is the current member of the DuPont board, uh, will assume the role of interim chair and CEO of DuPont. The board says it has engaged an executive recruitment firm to identify a full-time replacement. But once again, Ellen Coleman to retire as chair and CEO of DuPont, uh, effective on October 16th. Edward Breen, who's on the board already, will assume the role of interim chair and CEO of DuPont. Sarah, back to you. Wow, well, we've got the right guest to talk about this. Sue Herrera, thanks very much. Bill, Bill George, you have looked at DuPont. You've looked at this case study. Uh, you've looked at the proxy battle with Tryon. We talked to earlier to Ed Garden, David Faber did, about DuPont sticking in that stock. It is the worst performing Dow component so far this year, almost 30%. Is this a good move for her to leave now? Well, I'm very surprised. I'm not sure of the background of what happened here, but it's clear that uh, Ed Breen and the board has stepped in and decided that a uh, change is made. I like Ellen a lot. I think she's done a good job. Uh, things have not gone well since they won the proxy fight, and uh, there must be a decision on her part and the board's part to uh, find fresh leadership. But it comes as a big surprise to me. Uh, no doubt they're being pressured by drop in commodity markets, but uh, beyond that, they've got a big job to do, and I think this is going to shake a lot of things up, and it could even bring Tryon back in again. Who knows? But uh, we'll get back to Twitter I think this in a second, puts but DuPont uh, up for grabs until they find a permanent and, and CEO. And I should mention that it's Bill not has... A, it doesn't seem like a well-planned move at all to me. I should mention that jo Bill George has come out in defense of Ellen Coleman in the proxy right. war with Tryon, which she won. Hey, Bill, is it unfair to judge the performance of a CEO based on the stock performance? I mean, Sarah just mentioned that it's been the worst performing stock inside the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Is that a reason to jettison your CEO necessarily? Well, I think it depends on time. Uh, you know, you've got terrible commodity markets, and that's putting a lot of pressure on them. Uh, that's why I'm so surprised. Uh, certainly not in a three-month period uh, since or four-month period since the proxy fight, but uh, Ellen might have decided that uh, the whole thing had worn her down. She wanted to, to, to go off and uh, give someone else a shot. But they're going to have to stabilize this company very quickly. Otherwise, they're at risk if not to uh, try and then somebody else coming in. So I think they're going to have to find permanent leadership. Ed Breen's a terrific guy. Maybe he'll do it. But they're going to have to find permanent leadership here very quickly uh, to preserve the uh, two-century-old legacy of, of DuPont. Bill, how will this proxy fight now be viewed in light of this recent news? Because... When it happened, it was viewed as a victory for DuPont, a failure for Tryon. But then you see the way that the stock performed. At the time, Ellen Coleman was hailed a hero of the company for standing up to boardroom activists. How will we view that now? Well, I think that's a big question. Uh, uh, it was a close vote. I should point out uh, it was not a landslide by like a lot of these proxy fights. have been. this was a close one. Uh, and I think a lot of the short term holders wanted to see some action there. Uh, I certainly would hate to see DuPont broken up in little pieces and lose their central research lab, which is an American treasure. So that's why I say a new CEO is going to have to step in very quickly or the company will be under a lot of pressure here. And, but it could have just worn it down. I know that she gave heart and soul to uh, preserving the DuPont and, frankly, to spin off their commodity chemical business uh, with a whole new company. And so they've got uh, a whole new future. Uh, stocks get a little hyped uh, during a, a proxy fight and get pushed up, but uh, I think the decline has been more than one would expect. So it looks like it's going to have a new leader coming in. I hope they can find the right person quickly to take this over. They can't afford to wait for uh, six months to put someone in charge. Put it in, put it in perspective, for, perspective for us, though, in light of the, here is what could be perceived as a victory now with her stepping down for an activist investor in Tryon. You know, activist investors have been very active in the last few years. Good or bad for corporate boardrooms in the aggregate? Well, I think it all depends on the company uh, and what they're proposing. There have been cases where a value line comes in, Jeff Ubin comes in to, uh, uh, into Microsoft and I think uh, caused some very good change with Satya Nadella coming in. Uh, so I think it all depends. PepsiCo, uh, same try-in. I don't think it was a good thing, and uh, Indra Nui in that case held the, held the line. Now GE is saying 
with Tryon coming in there, they welcome them. So this is a kind of a brave new world out there. But I think it's important that companies are clear about their strategy and clear that they're building for the long term. At the same time, they're meeting their shareholders' needs. And that's a, a tough juggling act for any CEO to do today, uh, to meet the needs of all their shareholders, particularly when a new shareholder shows up. So big challenge out there. So I think it's a mixed bag. If a company's more about not performing like Canadian Pacific Railway was and Bill Ackman came in, that's a good thing. But if a company's a peak performer, uh, I don't think it's a good thing. So I think you have to get down to cases and look at what the plan is. And does the, I didn't think that uh, in case of DuPont that uh, Nelson Peltz ever presented a viable plan. He just wanted to break it up. And that was going to get some short-term gain and no long-term future for the company, as I saw it. Well, meanwhile, the business continues to suffer. In this announcement, it was also revealed that they're lowering their operating earnings guidance this year to 275 from 310. They're blaming currencies. Obviously, they have a lot of international exposure, so the strong dollar hurts. Emerging markets have also been a problem, guys. Do we have the uh, after-hours chart? Because the stock, interestingly, I think it was higher. with this lowered guidance, is popping more yeah. than 10% in the after-hours on the news. Yeah. That yeah, Coleman will resign. I mean, shareholders are happy to hear that she's going. Bill, you never want to be the CEO that uh, when you leave, the stock goes up 4%, but that's what's happening with Ellen right now. No. You sure don't. That's, uh, that's, uh, I feel badly for her, but it's clear that uh, people are anticipating some, some form of significant change. I just hope that they preserve a viable long-term course for this uh, great American entity and that it doesn't disappear like some other organizations have, like Bell Labs did a few years ago. Well, they're holding a conference call at 5 p.m. Eastern time, so we'll have more details for you then. But wow. in the meantime, Bill, great to have you Thanks, on for this. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Serendipitous to have him there. I know. It's, happening, one, right? it's one business school case study after another. We here. do have much more on this DuPont shakeup still ahead coming up here in just a few minutes. Plus, we're still going to talk